Hi, I'm Costa. In the next few minutes, I'm going to show you how to prepare BC albacore tuna. This tuna is wild caught on our coast of British Columbia. And you buy it frozen at sea, it's the best way to get it. You're looking for loins like this, which come off the tuna. And you're looking for a nice pink color in the loin like this, not a cottony white. And that's what tells you it's very fresh. This tuna is unique to all tunas because it's very buttery and it's very tender. You're looking for this dip in the loin. This is the part you're going to place down. You're going to take off the ends, which we're going to use in the roll. When you're cutting this, you want to just have it tempered a little bit. You don't want it totally thawed out. So when you're taking the top off, you can start like this. Place your tuna down now and take that cut right off there. This is what we're going to use for the spicy rolls. And this is the part that you are going to use, which is called a block cut for your sashimi. We're going to trim off a little bit of the excess here to flatten it out. And we're going to take it on a 45 degree, on a bias. You want to then place it down and let it sit on the table for a few minutes while it thaws thoroughly. And the color will change. It will come nice and pink. Now we're going to start doing a little bit of uh, rolls. What you do is you take your tuna and you make little strips like this. We're going to make some little pieces. Use a very sharp knife. You put that inside a bowl. You put a, your favorite hot sauce. This one happens to be mine. It's a Korean one. And then you put a couple of spoons of mayo. Mix this up. And that's your ingredients for the spicy roll. Make your rolls. Just place them on the plate and enjoy. This tuna should be appreciated rare. We're going to start with the loins. We're going to sprinkle a little bit of soya sauce on the loins and a little bit of white pepper, a dab of oil. Use canola oil. Don't use olive oil because you're going to burn it. You want to have very high heat on this. We're going to place the tuna like that in the frying pan. So just turn it around and sear all the sides of the tuna and all this good stuff that's coming in the pan. That's what we're going to glaze and make our white wine sauce. Once you sear it, remove the tuna from the pan, add your white wine. We'll reduce our white wine. We'll add some Dijon. You want to reduce the sauce so that it becomes somewhat thicker and more intensified. You add your butter. And at that point, you turn down your heat. And all you want to do is just melt the butter right into the sauce to give it a nice glaze. Pour the sauce onto your plate. And the reason for the stainer is obvious. You're going to grab all the little parts in there. That's what you're looking for, just a sear. And you want to place your tuna onto the plate right over that sauce. I got a little bit of chili oil and just dribble that all around. This is an example of how quick and simple it is to prepare a dish with this tuna. I'm going to make a Hawaiian dish, which is very popular. Could be done with mahi-mahi, but you know what? This particular tuna happens to be one of the greatest for it. I'm going to make some pieces. I'm going to mix salt into this recipe. Put it in the fridge for 20 minutes. Pull this out of the fridge. I'm going to put a little bit of sesame seed oil, some mirum, chili peppers, which I've chopped up. You can put more, you can put less. A little bit of ginger, a little bit of green onions, and a little bit of sesame seed. I'm going to add very little soya sauce just for color. This is a presentation I like to do with my poke. Is put it into a martini glass, just a garnish, a little bit of cilantro. You can serve that as a starter. Nutritious, delicious, a sustainable fishery, I'm Costa for all the tuna fishermen for you to enjoy. Uh -huh.